Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Hard West with me, Bring It Don. Now let's go to the workshop. Solomon entered the workshop. It was an utter mess. He spent the rest of the day restoring the tools to an operational state so he could begin building prototypes for new patents. Now the raw material stocks were empty. The only way to restock them was through the Pony Express. That meant that each prototype would come at a cost. Now Solomon ordered parts via the Pony Express to craft an item. We'll grab the revolver rifle. Two more Cliff's notes suggested the natives knew what caused the madness. Delir decided to pay them a visit and try to find out what they knew. Right, we have a few things to explore. I saw him encountered a toothless dwarf who seemed to have gone completely mad. The merchant kept asking him whether he wanted to buy scraps of fate. Despite his appearance, he had a few genuinely remarkable items for sale. Back to the gunsmith. Arno M. Scheringer was intelligent but paranoid. Yet despite his quirks, he impressed the Pinkertons with his expertise. Oh, he has a blueprint. Oh, we do want to buy as many blueprints as we can. But we can't yet. We we'll just have to keep in mind that he has this here. We also have a few cards in hand. Let's just reset everything real fast. Who has the best aim? 45, 50, and 60. We'll give him this in lieu of the Deadly, De Deadly Derringer. Because uh, this still allows for two shots per turn. Can sell that. Is there a shotgun guy? I'm gonna give him a healing elixir since he should be close to the action. Give him one as well. Proves aim. Increases maximum luck. Right, let's consider our cards first. Lieutenant Clubs gives you vengeance. A survive a fatal shot. If you kill your killer, you'll make it. Otherwise, you'll die. A King of Diamonds. Beast hearing since nearby enemies. This will be good for... Which one has our shotgun? And I call him green. Okay, a ten of hearts, a, a golden bullet I'm going to give to... Is it blue? <laughs> That's a hard time keeping these guys straight. Yeah, it's blue. I'm also going to give him this. I just might give this to him. Oh, we'll see, hold on. So the ten of spades, we get ricochet, bounce bullets off of one or more ricocheted objects. Ricochet objects, not ricocheted. Plus two defense, we'll give to green. That to him. We'll give him better aim as well. We'll spread the aim around a little bit for now. Alright, uh, to the Ruined Mansion. Once a majestic home, the Ruined Mansion now retained only a shadow of its former glory. Solomon knocked to no avail. Actually, how much can we sell the Deadly Derringer for at the Gunsmith? 60. That will give us enough for the blueprint. Alright, uh, to the inhabited house. Solomon arrived at a dilapidated cottage inhabited by the Thurner family. A strange group that laughed even at the most solemn things. They invited him for dinner. Uh, Solomon decided to accept their offer. One of the Pinkertons accepted their offer fell sick soon afterwards. Later, tormented by a horrible waking nightmare, he perished. A Solomon confronted the family. They begged for their lives and gave him a blueprint signed by Trimmercliff. Solomon killed them and took their valuables. Solomon killed the crazy family, took everything of worth. 
A new Pinkerton arrived shortly. The death of his predecessor had a slight but noticeable impact on Solomon's mind. Yeah, so something unique with this scenario is the Pinkertons will die, but they just come back. Nothing to it. Alright, to the derailed train. Solomon arrived at the scene of a terrible catastrophe. Inside the crashed train sat a single conscious man, uh, surrounded by bodies. He was covered in blood, but otherwise appeared well. He introduced himself as James she Scheffler and assured Solomon that he had once been a doctor. He asked whether Solomon or his companions needed any help. Yeah, one of them does, but we don't have the money for it right now. Back right, to the ghost town. Uh, the inhabitants of this town had become, re had become either so crazed or so terrified that they had left. Seeming suddenly and all at once, a uh, building stood abandoned as decay slowly crept in. Solomon wondered whether they had anything had left anything useful behind. Uh, Solomon devoted only a short. Well, let's let's do the number one. A Solomon performed a thorough search, allowing the madness of the place to leave Im an imprint on his mind. Why can't I read? Uh, the search yielded several items, including liquor from a secret stash and the notebook of Sheriff Turner's deputy, a dead-eyed Dean. Dean wrote that Sheriff Turner was arrested, arresting lawful citizens for crimes they didn't commit. Every accusation ended in the, on the gallows. Sheriff Turner had become convinced that every person in his town was a criminal. After reading through the notebook, Solomon felt this tainted place had left a mark on his soul. But we got money and other stuff. All right, uh, I guess to the Indian village next. I think. I think that's everything. The natives told him about a comet they had seen shortly before people began going mad. Everyone had twisted dreams that night. The man who lived in the ruined mansion could tell him more. A Solomon would need to give him the password. Jade is the gem of greed. Alright, Solomon came to the native village. Uh, the people who here were eccentric, but closer to sanity than most. Solomon traded with the natives. So some of these are probably worth grabbing. We'll grab this and... This for now. good to me. Alright, Solomon remained in Shroom Cliff's old lab laboratory. It truly made it his own now. Alright, Solomon started his research. Uh, let's do engineering next. Solomon had yet to do any engineering research. He hoped his first breakthrough would allow him to patent assorted parts and the noise bomb. Assorted parts were an assortment of versatile parts that could fix almost any device. The noise bomb reduced the aim and defense capabilities of enemies and caught in its blast. Now we have blueprints. Alright, Solomon invented the and patented, uh, patented, why can't I talk today? Assorted parts and the noise bomb. Alright, and I guess we'll do chemistry. We'll just do a nice, keep things um nice and even. Uh, Solomon has never researched chemistry. He felt his first breakthrough would allow him to patent the revealer and the medical bag. The former improved sight reveals notes in invisible ink, it reduces health. Medical bags allow instantaneous healing of damage. Alright, and then we'll do gunsmithery again. Alright, uh, Solomon made his first breakthrough in gunsmithing. He had a hunt the next would yield a patent for the harmonica gun. It was a pistol with a revolutionary clip that allowed quick reloading. I think that's all the blueprints we had. Let's double check that. Yep, we're all set.
Oh yeah, Solomon gave the natives some mechanisms and shared his gunsmithing expertise, earning $50. Solomon determined that in order to teach the natives anything at all, he required at least gun three gunsmithing breakthroughs of his own. Alright, so I need one more. Already read that. He said, Jade is the gem of greed. At Solomon's words, the doors sprang open. Behind it was an elderly man who invited Solomon inside and asked if he would like some refreshment. The inside of the house was also in ruins. The whole building looked as though it might collapse at any moment. Solomon asked about the madness. The elderly man spoke to him about the origin of the madness. He said he remembered the night it had begun. The same night, the comet blazed across the sky, and everyone he knew was touched by terrible nightmares. A Father Gilmer had organized an asylum in his church uh, to the southwest in an attempt to cure the sick. He was able to gain much insight into the disease and record it in his notes. Madmen turned on him at their first opportunity and tore him apart. Solomon's words, the door sprang open. Wait, where'd he read that? Uh, Solomon asked about the nearby land. The old man spoke at length about the reactions of three prominent members of the local community. First, he spoke of Trimmercliff, an insane genius who wrote secret notes about the comet and invisible ink on top of decoy doc documents. He told the story of Sheriff Turner, a wise and just lawman, became paranoid after the comet's arrival. He began his reign of terror in which he built an army of madmen and criminals, who hunted like a pack of ravening wolves. Finally, he spoke of his own son, Alvar Alvaro, who went looking for an ancient native city, never returned. All right, Solomon asked to barter. Plus two damage would be worthwhile. I'll probably save up for that. Alright, uh, let's go to the pharmacy next. A middle-aged man with his lips sewn together ran a pharmacy in the middle of nowhere. Though he never spoke a word, he seemed rational and was eager to strike a bargain. Alright, to the old camp. Solomon stumbled upon an abandoned campsite. Beside an extinguished fire pit, he found Trimmercliff's notes. It made little sense to him presently, but he thought they might prove useful later on. One notebook was entitled My Rival Inventors, and contained slanderous texts ridiculing other inventors such as Tim Russell, Christopher Wilson, and Solomon DeLear. Amid mocking comments about his mistakes, Solomon found extensive deliberations on the senselessness of his past research. Solomon decided to keep the notebook. It would motivate him toward scientific perfection. The notebook in his pocket. He never forgot his partner or his past errors. Though his madness increased, but they came scientific greatness. Back to the trading post. Solomon felt weakened and insecure. His mind was constantly distracted. He was played by strange dreams which inspired him to create a strange new blueprint. We we're also affected by vertigo. An ascending trading post was a modest hut made of raw planks. Miss Bradford ran the trade with the natives. Wares included weapons, clothes, and tobacco. The quality of her wares seemed high, but so were her prices. Ooh. Oh, minus five to aim. Ooh, don't like that. Volcano pistol would be worth having as well. She also sells a blueprint. All right, to the giant clock. Solomon met J.M. Hobie, an engineer who had developed what he called the world's clock. The device counted the time remaining until doomsday. Uh, Solomon asked about the clock in detail, and seeing the dedication of the watchmaker, decided it was his duty as an inventor to help with its construction. A lot of blueprints that we don't have the money for. Uh, what was the workshop again? Okay, yeah, so we need um revealer for that. I think we buy that from the gunsmith. It was now Solomon Delir's workshop, completely renovated and ready to use. Now Solomon ordered parts via the Pony Express to craft an item. 
Yeah, we gotta pay for it. Only eight. Love to have it. Alright, to the asylum. Uh, the church had been refitted to function as an asylum. The old man had told him of this place. Solomon approached the asylum. Guns at the ready. A Solomon approached the asylum from the east, heading for the main entrance. I think we're all set. Oh, it's the mines a consumable. Oh, that won't do me any good. Actually, let's go back real fast. Oh, I can't. All right, to combat. To have a uh, a blueprint, I can unlock the next gunsmithery patent, and then go to the uh, Indian camp and give them the three assorted parts and teach them. What was it? Uh, gunsmithing for fifty dollars. All right, searching for information about the plague of madness. Solomon and the persons arrived at an old church that had been converted into a mental asylum. It didn't take long for the inmates to mutiny, however. Staff gone, it ascended into a chaotic, lawless mess. The church was now a makeshift asylum, but it appeared the inmates had taken over. The madmen guarding the doors all wore deputy badges that read Turner. Delir wondered where Gilmer's office had been, Probably upstairs, he grumbled. Only Delir knew how to identify the files. He would need to go there personally. So there's a guy right there. Uh, I don't want to get over there. I guess I could stand, well... Just now we have line of sight on a couple of them. I'm gonna put him on the second floor of this building. Slowly but surely. Fifty-seven for four, sixty-four for four. Take her out. Easy peasy. Now let's get him up here. I think that'll give us some control over the battlefield. Um, send him up here for now. Slowly make our way forward. I know there's a guy all the way over here. Uh, might be worth... Yeah, we'll send him right here. Not a fan of that. Take care of that guy. <laughs> a 59% chance of five. That's pretty good. How far away we are. What's he got? Yeah, I'll take that shot for sure. Alright, so he still needs to make his way forward. We'll park right here and reload. Let's 
Still pretty good odds. Not enough to kill, but enough to maim. I think that's good enough for right now. We're gonna send a Delir this way as well. And they'll clear out the building together. Or the church itself. That's what I was afraid of. I almost ran right up here. I think he can only do four damage. He doesn't have a uh, five damage option. So rushing him in would just... 100% oh, chance, cool. Would be beneficial. All right, so I'm kind of a pickle here, but I can do this to do uh, use golden bullet and take that guy out. Clear the way. Send him ahead, I think. Take care of this guy. And send Solomon right here. I might have them hold for now. Look at the other uh, persons in the position. There's gonna be more enemies in here. I don't remember this mission being that easy. Could have him hold out here instead. He has nine health, he should be okay by himself for a while. I don't want to lock him inside with his uh his range. I could cover it here. Has me a little nervous.
Nice shotgun, buddy. into the fray. Right, let's get him inside as well. Let's point out there's a reason not to. I think they attack the outside, right? I don't rightly remember, actually. You know what? I might park him right here instead. Over here might be better, actually. Let's do that. I would still like to keep him outside. And he should be down here as well. The Lear searched the room and found documents bearing Trumer Cliff's insignia. Safe zone, where's that at? Only back to where we came from. Alright, works for me. I think everybody's... Maybe more enemies don't spawn here. I swore that they did. Looks like we might be in the clear then. Movement is terrible. If I remember that we had to do this part of this scenario, I would have, uh, Give him some uh, movement items. Oh, yeah, it's clear all the way, so we should just run him out, it looks like. I'm still gonna play it safe and stay in cover. You never know.
summon leapt into his uh, steam carriage, highly pursued by Turner's men. It was the same bunch of lunatics that had been in the laboratory when he first arrived there. He was horrified by their ferocity. Clearly, they thought of themselves as lawmen. Between their lack of fear, Turner's leadership and their sheer numbers, they had rapidly dominated the region. He hoped the documents from the asylum would shed some light on the madness and its source. A little bit more money. I need to research gunsmithery one more time. Does it make me do the other thing here? Uh, let's do yeah, gunsmithery. I saw him made his second breakthrough in gunsmithing. Uh, I wondered. He wondered if the next would allow him to patent the chain rifle and the duckfoot pistol. Chain rifles had great capacity. The duckfoot was a powerful pistol design. All right, Solomon invented the patent and patented uh, the chain rifle and the duckfoot pistol. Which means we can go to the Indian village. All right, Solomon gave the natives some mechanisms and shared his gunsmithing expertise, earning fifty dollars. They learned eagerly where there might be might come a time when they needed better guns to protect themselves. Solomon happily took their gold. Then there was something I wanted, was it... I guess it's the Ruined Mansion. The Cursed Ammo, that's what I want. Oh, Holy Amulet, plus 50 max luck. That'll be good for, um... Well, anybody, really. All right, uh, let's trade. We'll give the plus two ammo to, or plus two damage to him, I think. Since he currently has our highest chance to hit. I'd like to get him the volcano pistol, actually. Let's give him that and we'll go, well, we have more cards. So on the Holy Power, gain demonic strength and plus one HP. We'll give that to our shotgun guy. Jack of Diamonds gives a Shadow Self, a passive regenerate when not in direct sunlight, very powerful nightmares, and plus two defense. Give that to our main character. And Queen of Diamonds, ability Shadow Cloak, when not in direct sunlight, you become invisible, plus two movement. We'll give that to our shotgun guy as well. I already forgot what I was going to do next. The Volcano Pistol. Who sells that? I think it was... The Trading Post. Yeah, only $60. Uh, I will... Give her that in exchange. As well as some money. It's a weird delay in this scenario. I don't know why. There we go. There's something else I was going to look at. I don't remember what it was. What we could do with some healing, because I think... It's missing a brain part. Yes, yeah, so I think whenever they respawn... No, it's not this guy. He didn't die. It was this guy. Let's give him the Holy Amulet. And then I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll go and analyze the data and just keep on chugging. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.